With all this as a backdrop, tonight President Biden will give the State of the Union address. Sources inside the White House say parts of that speech that address China are being edited after the shooting down of that Chinese surveillance balloon. Overall, the White House says the president wants to remind Americans of the progress that has been made since he took office, especially on the economy. The president is expected to call on Congress to pass legislation on his tax plan for billionaires, as well as a universal cap for insulin prices and police reform. Let's bring in the CEO of the Messina Group, Jim Messina. He served as White House Deputy Chief of Staff to President Obama and ran his 2012 re-election campaign. Also with us, founder of the conservative website The Bulwark, Charlie Sykes. And Jim, uh, first question in terms of the president uh, and messaging tonight, in terms of his accomplishments, accomplishments, what does he need to do to really take ownership of the past two years? He needs to explain what he's done. Six in 10 Americans don't know. That's not surprising. It's exactly mm -hmm. what we went through on the Obama reelect. Mm -hmm. He's got to start to set the stage. You know, the bully pulpit of the president doesn't really exist anymore. He just yep. has a couple of very big opportunities. This is the biggest one he's going to have. This is one time where the voters actually look in and say, okay, what's my president doing? What is he going to do to make my life better? Tonight's an absolute crucial beginning of that conversation with the American voter. So, Joe, uh, yes, and also voters will hear this, um, you know, huge response from Republicans all over the Internet. Many of them have podcasts of their own in leadership in the Senate. Um, so it is hard to get a solid message across in this current atmosphere. He's got the bully pulpit. I mean, um, uh, to to quote the line from the, the Michael Wolf. Uh, book that, that, that I, the that, that headline, television is the new television. Uh, the bully pulpit is the new bully pulpit, oh. which, which is to say the more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, and Charlie Sykes, I remember being so frustrated to Bill Clinton. He'd sit there and he'd drone on for like an yes. hour and a half. <laughs> Halfway through speeches. his State of the Union speech, I'd be like, man, I'm going to go lie down in the cloakroom, wake me up near the end so I can get up and applaud. Um, but he'd just go, and I did this, I did. and I was like, there, you know what? He's put America to sleep. No, he didn't. Like his state, of, his state of the union addresses. I learned a valuable lesson. Those things are powerful, and and you just drive home accomplishment after accomplishment. What should you know Wisconsin politics so well? What should Joe Biden talk about tonight uh, to, to to get to Wisconsin voters to show Wisconsin voters uh, that their vote for him in 2020 made sense, and a vote for him in 2024 would be a good bet as well. Well, what he's got to do is he has to talk about a substantive record. And I think that's what's going to be interesting tonight is to watch um, the contrast between uh, the president uh, talking about a substantive record uh, and uh, the, the performative House majority, uh, how they respond to to him. Because, of course, they're going to be under a lot of pressure from their base uh, to uh, to engage in the kind of tantrums that we saw last time. It'll be interesting to see how Kevin McCarthy re responds. But w what he's got to do is he actually has to start using the bully pulpit. Um, and, you know, I, I have to admit, uh, Joe, that, that having you know spent about 40 years watching these State of the Unions, uh, I am a little bit jaded because they, they, they're surrounded by a lot of hype and a lot of you know, and a lot of uh, pomp and circumstance. Um, I'm trying to remember one that actually moved the needle. But Joe Biden has to begin to break through to the American people, which he has not done so far. And uh, he has not really used the bully pulpit in all the ways that other presidents have, have done. He hasn't had a lot of uh, Oval Office addresses. There have not been a lot of these uh, set pieces. So he's got to make the most of this moment. But I think that it would be somewhat naive to think that this is going to be a transformative moment. This is going to be a long slog where this White House is going to have to, um, you know, buckle down and realize that it has to tell its story and it has to tell it over and over and over and over again mm -hmm. in the face of what's going to be a lot of smoke and mirrors coming up from uh, the opposition. And again, um, I don't expect the speech to be, you know, particularly riveting, but um, I am going to be watching the response from the Republicans, um, who, of course, uh, again, you know, managed to. Uh, um, managed to make quite a spectacle of themselves a year ago. 
And Donald Trump has promised a video at the end of this, too. We'll watch for that. Jonathan Lemire, um, we know that talking to the White House these last several months in particular, but really the last couple of years, some of the frustration they feel about not having their accomplishments uh, acknowledged or recognized. You look at that poll from The Washington Post, 62 percent of Americans feel that President Biden has accomplished very little, not very much, whatever the term was. The wrong track number in the Monmouth poll yesterday was at 73 percent. They say we came in during a pandemic. We passed $1.9 trillion in that rescue package to save businesses, to help families. Uh, Health care has expanded, more people insured than were before. Unemployment at 3.4 percent. You know the litany. So how does the president break through that, number one? And number two, is this in some ways a unofficial a launch of his reelection campaign if he does in fact decide to run again. Yeah, it's being perceived as as a soft launch. We certainly won't hear him tonight declare his candidacy. That's probably not coming for at least a few weeks, if not a couple of months. But this is his biggest chance this year to talk about what his administration has done and also themes going forward. And White House aides have told me, we just talked, Charlie just mentioned, last year at the State of the Union, Lauren Boebert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, literally standing up and heckling and yelling at the president. Well, they hope that happens again, the White House aides, because they think it draws a really sharp contrast between their sort of radical rhetoric and incendiary behavior versus the president's, they say, somber, uh, important leadership. We're also going to hear from tonight, certainly, on the debt ceiling, saying, look, this is too important to negotiate. Like, we need to get this done. We should be above politics here, uh, and that that's too important to mess with Republicans. So, Jim Messina, um, you know, this is something where the White House, you know, to to, press, to Charlie's point, he's going to be able to talk to Wisconsin voters tonight, but also tomorrow. He's going to Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, I'll be part of that trip. Um, with Republicans now in charge of the House, inherently tonight's speech is going to be a little bit backwards looking. Hey, here are the things that we've done because there's realization we're probably not going to get a lot done the next two years because of the roadblocks they're going to put up. But voters want to hear about the future, particularly voters who think the country's on the wrong track. How does the president thread that needle tonight? You know, it's the hardest thing. We went through this with the Obama campaign exactly right. Mm. What he's got to do is first set the stage and talk about what he did, why people's lives are better. And then he's got to look at some of the things that haven't gotten done that are wildly popular, child tax credits, some of these other things, and drive straight at it and say, this is what I will do to make your life better. He can and must do both. He can walk and chew gum. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow he's going to the most important state in America in a presidential campaign, Wisconsin, where we've seen a manufacturing boom and really go straight at it and say, if you like what you've seen so far, wait till we continue this, this progress for the next two years. He has an amazing record to sell. He's got an ability to do it. Now that he's have to go out to the earlier point and do it over and over yeah. and over again. Well, and let's underline that fact too that that Americans, um, you know, if, if they don't think the guy's accomplished much, they just uh, aren't paying attention, and they aren't paying attention obviously because of all the distractions that are going on. But yep. you, you look at the fact that unemployment's at a 50-year low, childhood poverty's at a 50-year low. There's been a massive bipartisan infrastructure bill that's passed. There's been bipartisan gun safety legislation that's passed. Uh, one thing after another over the past couple of years, we've talked about it a good bit, Jim. So my question is, if you're, if you're writing the president's speech, are you more concerned in repeating those things? I know you said you can do both, but what's your emphasis? Repeating those two things are actually daring to go in to the Republican House and just marking the contrast by the fact that, you know, a lot of people that are running the House of Representatives now are insurrectionists, weirdos and freaks. Uh, I'd, look, I'd go straight at what he has done. I'd stay very focused on the economic stuff. He was the first president to win a presidential campaign and lose the economic argument in 2020. Mm. The Democrats uh, right now trail the Republicans on the economic argument. You and I have talked ad nauseum about this. And Democrats have to seize this moment. This is his bully pulpit moment. He needs to tell the American people what he did and what he's going to do to make their life better. He can go at the insurrectionists a little bit later. Yeah. Although I do think the midterms are won a lot because people don't like insurrections and they like democracy. It's true. And he stuck to that yep. uh, when others were thinking, what about this? What about that? We'll talk.